The curriculum for ages 6 through 12 focuses on the same stories covered in the lessons for ages 2 through 5, paired with more mature content and age-appropriate activities. The welcome can be a key time to visit and build relationships. Greet children as they arrive and ask them the meet and greet question to get conversation started. This question is designed to spark anticipation about the story they will soon hear. In a small group setting, you can ask each child the question individually. In a large group setting, you may want to wait till almost all the children have arrived and invite them to all find someone new and ask each other the meet and greet question. The welcome game is an icebreaker that introduces one aspect of the story. If time is limited, you may want to skip the game and play it at the end of the lesson if time allows. The purpose of the game is to inspire curiosity about the story and to get the children's bodies moving before transitioning into the worship. During the worship segment, you may have a place where classrooms can combine to worship all together as one large group. If not, be sure to designate a certain area of your room for worship. To help with the transition, play music as children move to that area. We worship God for who He is by focusing on one of His attributes. Each unit explores a different attribute of God, such as the God who provides or the King who knows our hearts. During the worship, it's very important that the children see you worshiping God. When the children watch you fully engage in worship, the singing, hand motions, and prayer, they will follow your lead and model your attitude. During the worship, children sing the unit Bible memory verse song and other songs that connect to an attribute of God or the lesson aim. Be sure to add hand motions. The worship also includes an illustration. It's a script for actors or a storybook that can be read by the worship leader. These illustrations use humor and participation and they involve recurring characters who encounter situations that lead them to seek answers from the Bible. The characters summarize the Bible story of the day and read key verses from it. They also apply the Bible story to their own situations. Children look forward to each episode. They identify with the characters and they see how to use God's Word for guidance and for inspiration. This is one way they learn who God is and what He has done. As you move from the worship to the Word, change rooms or locations within your room. Moving their bodies will help them focus when they read the Bible story. During this transition, have each child write his or her first name on a card and place it in the golden bowl. This will be used later in the lesson for prayer. Writing their names is something the children can do well, which gives them confidence as they learn something new. We begin the Word segment with the Classroom Covenant. This is a great classroom management tool because it defines your expectations for their behavior and it settles them down for the reading of God's Word. It also familiarizes the children with the concept of a covenant, which is a key concept in the Bible. Many teachers like to have the classroom covenant posted in the classroom. It's a great reminder to the children and teachers may refer to it as needed. After reciting the classroom covenant, it's time to review the previous lesson. If they are available, you can use a Bible timeline and map to give the children a broader perspective. Maps and dates help the children understand that the story is about real people who lived in real places. Now, if they are available, give a Bible to each child or have them share Bibles. The Bible story references are hidden behind a curtain or inside a special cabinet. Revealing the hidden references creates anticipation, underscores the importance of the Bible, and gives it a special place of honor. To add a visual, you can display a coloring page or a picture of the story with the references. You can reward a child by choosing them to be the one who gets to reveal the Bible story. Then, for inexperienced readers, open your Bible and read the passages to them. Some teachers prefer to have the children follow along as best they can. For experienced readers, before revealing the passage, play the game called Find It First. This game helps the children learn their way around the Bible. To play Find It First, have the children hold their closed Bibles on their laps until the verses are revealed. Then they race to find the Bible story. The first child to find the passage gets to help everyone else find the passage. 
Occasionally, here we will also include a reader's theater, where the children act out the story using scripture as their script. To prepare the children to focus on the reading, get their bodies moving by having them all stand for a brief prayer and then sit for the Bible story. Getting children to move a bit helps them pay attention. To help children remember the key verse, some teachers have children highlighted in their Bibles. The story was explained during the worship illustration, but now they read it for themselves. It's a totally different way of learning the story. The way begins with a discussion. Ask children questions about the story and how to apply it to their lives. This is an important opportunity for the children to express themselves. You may find that they have questions of their own that keep the discussion lively. Over time, through these discussions, you'll really get to know each child. Next is the Christ Connection. This is a brief but important section. In the Christ Connection, the children see the relationship between the Old and New Testament, showing them the whole Bible is one continuous story about who God is and what He has done. This ensures that the name of Jesus is spoken in every lesson. For example, the Christ Connection links the Genesis lesson about when God created light to the verse in John 1 that shows Jesus was with God in the beginning and that He is the light of the world. Before revealing the Christ Connection, once again play Find It First. The Christ Connection reference has also been hidden behind a curtain or inside a special cabinet. Reveal this passage the same way you introduced the main story. After reading and discussing the Christ Connection passage, it's time for the Golden Bowl. Remember how the children wrote their names on slips of paper and placed them in the Golden Bowl? Now it's time for you to pray aloud over each name in that bowl. The Golden Bowl symbolizes the Golden Bowls mentioned in Revelation 5, 8. At the foot of God's throne are Golden Bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. First, you pray aloud, lifting up the name of each child to God's throne. You'll find the children listen intently to hear you pray for them by name. Close the prayer time by leading the children in the Lord's Prayer. Pray this together in every lesson. By doing so, the children learn how to pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. At this point, if you have more than five minutes left, you can lead them in one or more of the activities located in the Got Time segment. Got Time is filled with optional activities that reinforce the story, the aim, or the Bible memory verse. You'll find a craft, a snack, games, and a Bible timeline review. Got Time is used in two ways. If you have a longer class, you can plan ahead and add Got Time elements to the way on a regular basis. Or, if you have extra time at the end of your class, use Got Time activities as needed. For example, when you have finished the Golden Bowl prayer and you still have time remaining, you can use Got Time games to reinforce the story, the aim, and the Bible memory verse as you wait for parents to arrive. The Bible memory verse games remain the same for the entire unit, so those are good ones to prepare and have ready in case you need them throughout the unit. When you have only five minutes left, it's time for the final five segment. During this closing segment, give the children their treasure treat. The treasure treat is a small, inexpensive item the children take home to spark conversation with their families about today's Bible story. For example, the treasure treat for the story about Joseph and his jealous brothers is a very small scrap of fabric to represent the cloth from Joseph's coat of many colors. When family members see the treat and ask about it, the child then has a great opportunity to share what he or she has learned that day. This takes God's Word into the home, and we're very excited about that. Before they leave, be sure to give each child the take-home Bible study. Children ages 6 through 9 take home the daily way. It has simple questions that encourage the children to open their Bibles at home and review the Bible story. Some children do this with a parent. The Daily Way Challenge invites children to bring back their completed daily ways each week. 
the children work together to fill the group's basket with completed daily ways. Once the basket is full, everyone celebrates together with a party or a special snack. Children ages 10 through 12 take home the W3 journal, which has more challenging questions about the Bible story and its meaning in their lives. These questions are more personal, like entries in a journal, so they are not returned. Instead, the children can keep them in a journal at home. With treasure treats and take-home studies in hand, the children are ready to go home. While waiting for parents to arrive, you may play the Bible memory verse song as background music and invite the children to create an offering of art by drawing a picture of today's Bible story. They can take the picture home or you can collect them to display for others to enjoy. Displaying these offerings of art help parents see what their children are learning. As the children work on their offerings of art, ask them how you can pray for them this week. Write requests in a prayer notebook so you can pray for them at home or with your prayer team. It's our hope that each child heads home, not only knowing a little more about who God is and what He has done, but having experienced God's love and His kindness along the way.